All right, picture this. You're teleported back in time, right smack into the middle of a medieval town. You look around, take a deep breath, and congratulations, you have malaria. Okay, I say malaria, but realistically, it could be any one of thousands of diseases that ran rampant back in those times. Diseases that your body is absolutely not prepared for. You thought 2020 was bad? Try living through 539 BC. I heard that they didn't even have Tylenol back then. Crazy stuff. You are dead, and if you're not dead, you'll wish you were. Also, during that time, plague was floating around like crazy. The Justinian plague was dropping bodies in Europe. Same with the bubonic plague. Yeah, so realistically, the day you're teleported back to the Middle Ages, you collapse and cease existence on the mortal plane. Alright, but what if you had the perfect immune system and you were never sick? Well, as you may have learned via your time as a human, there's more than one way to get very, very injured. If at any point you even scraped yourself, you've got like a 90% chance of infection. Infection was one of the biggest killers at the time. Oh no, little Johnny got a splinter. Time to buy a gravestone. Most infections were a death sentence. Being a doctor back then was closer to being an astrologer than anything else. They operated based more on theories than scientific fact. Doctors would come up with ideas like, hmm, maybe if I remove your left femur, your headache will stop. Yep, that sounds right. You sure? Meh, why not? Those people were not what we would call medical professionals. I personally love hearing about the random cures for diseases and medications they used in a time where they didn't have that many band-aids to go around. For example, if you were sick, a lot of doctors wouldn't waste time mixing up a pot of leaves and such to try to cure you medicinally. No, 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 that wouldn't be nearly deadly enough. Instead, the most often used strategy to cure disease was called bloodletting, which went a little something like this. You're sick. Oh shoot, is there a cure? Oh yeah, no worries, I got you covered. Oh perfect, thank you. I'm so glad I came to a doctor instead of trying to cure myself. I wouldn't want to end up getting even more hurt. <laughs> no need to thank me. The same effect could also be done with leeches. Although at this point, you may be asking, what? But no worries, it actually makes a lot of sense. Basically, they were trying to drain the tainted blood out of you as efficiently as possible. Some of the doctors that did the operations believe that if the patient didn't pass out due to blood loss, the surgery wasn't a success. Which I have to add is just a beautiful strategy. Not effective at all, but beautiful. Okay, but what if you never got sick and never even scraped yourself accidentally? Surely you'd be able to survive at that point, right? Well, the next biggest worry is other people. If you have anything remotely valuable on you, it will get stolen and you'll likely get maimed in the process. But what about the police, I hear you ask? Yeah, they didn't have any sort of police force back then. If you had a crime committed against you, all you could really do is yell THIEF and hope someone does something. Luckily, crime was prevented in another true and tested way. That way, of course, being going extremely overboard with the punishments. As you may know, people in the medieval era were very good at finding creative ways to kill each other. Like with this thing, or this thing, or this thing. Wow, isn't art beautiful? The justice system was insane back then. A small crime like forgery or arson would immediately result in a hanging, like same day, no trial. And that's if you're one of the lucky ones. See, the Middle Ages loved their creative punishments. If you committed even a small offense, there's a chance you'd be put through trial by ordeal, which is a system where criminals would basically have to earn their freedom through challenges. Like this one, where they would tie your hands and feet, then just freaking chuck you into a river. If you float back up, you're obviously full of sins since the holy river has rejected you. But, if you sink all the way to the bottom, then you're sin-free because you were accepted by the holy river. <laughs> yeah, this test didn't have the highest of survival rates. We should absolutely adopt that system of trial by ordeal in this day and age. You stole an old lady's purse? You're not going to trial. You're gonna have to fight these orangutans. Good luck. Anyway, back on topic. So, what if you never got sick, never even slightly injured yourself, and never committed any minor infractions? There's still the issue of language. Yeah, even if you speak perfect English, remember that people back in the day didn't speak English. Like, you would walk up to a stranger asking for directions, and the conversation would go something like this. Hey, do you happen to know where the nearest hotel is? Well, Spipstiak from Westward Slope Wires, what's the up? Jesus Christ. Yeah, even if you could find somebody who spoke English, 
it would be far too demented to be able to tell what was happening. Good luck bartering or trading with somebody who you can't understand. Okay, but what if you spoke fluent Middle English, never got hurt, sick, or committed any minor infractions? How would you survive then? Well, there's one other little detail I forgot to mention about the Middle Ages. Everyone was very, very religious. Like, you said the Lord's name in vain? We're gonna test out the new Spine Ripper 4000 on ya. Make sure everyone knows not to violate our hyper-specific rules ever again. There were a couple of wars fought over religion back in the Middle Ages. One might even call it a slightly controversial topic. Personally, I wouldn't make it 30 minutes into a conversation with someone without saying God damn or Jesus Christ or any number of heretical words or phrases. If you want to see some absolutely cursed weapons of war from history, click this video here. If not, click this video that YouTube thinks you'll like.